I'm Alex Moore with That Nerd Show. We're continuing on with our interviews for the Oak Cliff Film Festival here in 2016. I'm moving right along with the film Lace Crater. I have director and screenwriter Harrison Atkins and actress Lindsay Birch. So what have we got here? What's the Ooh, what is the story baby. we have with Lace Crater? What's uh, the what's it about? Inspiration. Oh, uh, like you mean what's the, you, so you mean what's the movie about? Or what where did the, the idea come from? For yeah. This? Uh, well, for me, it was kind of a collision of um, trying to see what would happen if you combine two really disparate tones. Okay. Um, so on one hand, there's like a kind of horror thing, or like a, some sort of dark dread uh, horror aesthetic. Uh, palette and something that's a lot more relationship based and talky um, and cerebral and at least creator sort of what came out of that it's a, it's a movie about a girl who has sex with a ghost he gets an STD wow yeah it's um does it, does it get, does it get more uh, yeah chilling than that I would say <laughs> So, um, what, what was your part in, in, the, in this film? Uh, exactly? I was the I played the young woman who okay. had sex with a ghost. <laughs> so, um, how, how did, when you were coming on to this film, uh, what was the approach? You know, what what reeled you in and made you decide this was a film you wanted to be a part of? Well, Harrison and I had met on the set of a short film called Sisters by our mutual friend Chris Osborne, and. Um, so then when Joe Swanberg approached me about working with this young filmmaker who he knew, he was producing the movie, and I was friends with Joe, and then I remembered Harrison, he sent me the treatment, and there was like this sort of like one line in the script that just really, really appealed to me right off the bat, and it was, I just thought it was really funny and smart and unusual, and so I was like, yeah, I want to do this thing. It was just like a really small detail that I just thought was really unique. And so you find with the with with the subject matter like this that there is kind of a delicate line between finding humor and something that's kind of a, a dark uh, subject. I mean, I think there there was a tightrope to walk in, uh, like every day on set, sure. and making sure that the tone sort of stayed um, unified, uh, because we were sort of setting out to to make a movie unlike any that that we could really find. Um, I mean, there were reference points on either side of the equation for the tone. But um, but few movies have come close to, to like really trying to to make something that's simultaneously disturbing and funny, um, scary and romantic. Um, so for sure, I think it was a tiny little um, little spectrum where where things worked and felt right, and there were a lot of um, there was a lot of possibility to, to go wrong and. And like crafting the performance and making the edit feel like rhythmically right and stuff like that. So what was the what was the approach on creating something visually with there being a ghost involved? I mean, was it less is more to variety. And well, um, uh, we knew we wanted to make a, a movie with like practical effects. Um, that felt important, and I have a collaborator named Ben Gozier who um, I've been working with for some years. Um, who's a he's a, a, a his specialty is like a practical special effects and makeup design. Um, so we worked together from a pretty early stage in um, visualizing through how all the gags would work in the film, um, but then also relied on a, a pretty impressionistic and subjective cinematography style um, that was very collaborative and very emotional with the director of photography, this guy Gideon de Villiers. And uh, for, for you, uh, did, were there any moments that were a little bit uncomfortable at times, or were you able to just kind of psych yourself into it, you know, even with some of the scenes that may have been a little bit harder to, to shoot for the film? Um, I mean, the only, the things that were like the hardest to shoot, I suppose, were, were more things like it being very cold. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes that's what it comes down to, it's like, it's really cold and you're wearing a swimsuit, or or you're like being covered in some kind of weird muck, like some kind of weird goop that you have to maybe wake up in. We've all and been there. We've all been there. <laughs> and that, that, those, those moments were cold. Uh, and then what else was hard? I mean, I guess what was hard, well, what was, that one scene was really hard. There was one scene that was hard from like an acting kind of perspective. Kind of because we had wound up playing this like massive game of mafia as uh, as a film crew and and I was like basically like lost the game like right before I had to do this really hard scene so that was hard <laughs> I'm like a, an emotional and pride level. <laughs> 
so just just quickly about, about the film again, though. Um, what what do you think is you know going to be sort of the end result? Like, how, you know, what are you hoping for? It'll be the overall reaction for people who watch the film. Uh, well, I mean, I hope that people leave the film feeling like they've seen something that they can't describe, mm -hmm. um, and but something that that they feel connected to or engaged by. Um, I guess I'm really seeking this territory that that's that it, I guess it's the potential that cinema has to sort of explore territories that are you know that are not necessarily verbal or rhetorical but kind of only in you know in like feelings and moods and so so I guess I hope people walk out of the theater being like what just happened <laughs> I don't know but something did and then um, you know I'm really stoked about on a more like pragmatic level just the way the film has been received and the different festivals you've been able to attend with it and you know it's where you have like a, a distribution plan happening I think the movie's going to come out in the end of July or early August well we'll keep an eye on out for that and see how it goes but just quickly before we wrap things up we have one final question that we ask everybody in our interviews if you could be involved in a Star Trek or Star Wars movie which one would it be and why mm. me first uh, <laughs> Star Wars because I know a lot more about it okay. I was never really a Trekkie uh, I think that were I to uh, to fall into a Star Trek wormhole, so to speak, I'd probably go really deep. Mm. Um, but I just haven't. It's like I haven't yet done that. It's like I'm just now getting into the Rolling Stones, you know. <laughs> Is that Same. true? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say Star Trek, just because the most recent Star Wars I found unbelievably underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys I'm sorry to all of you oh we're good either way um, I just took issue with it on a lot of levels <laughs> but yeah Star Trek seems I mean fun it seems fun